with Cavalry being announced with the new generational three heroes of Urag and Torben, I thought why not give my first impressions for both heroes in this video. So we're going to go through all of the skills, talk about them, and then come into the real game and showcase what potential combos we could be running if we decided to split them apart and not run the meta combo, which would be together. So let's just dive into today's video. Uh, hello everyone, yes, smash a like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos. Me, Mr. Sneaker, the one and only, and we're here on Call of Dragons. We've got Urag on display, showcasing his first skill, and we're going to go through all of his skills first, and then we're going to go through Tobin's, and we're going to obviously talk about what I like about these heroes, and what I don't like, obviously, about each of the heroes. So first things first, just to let you guys know, this is the first skill. Just to go back one slide, it shows you the first skill awakened, right? So this is kind of why I wanted to do it this way, because the original skill does 1600 damage and it does two nearby enemy legions take 300 damage, but it says it spreads. So this is a kind of cool new, maybe like damage over time, spread plague mechanic, who knows? We'll soon see, but it's basically an area of effect skill for cavalry for the first time, which is really, really nice since they updated Alistair to obviously add a little bit more AoE. So this is really cool that we've getting another AoE hero for legendary now for the Cavs. So when we go into the first skill, um, or should I say the second skill, um, we get some really good stuff. These are the things that I really wanted to see on calves. I'm not going to lie. I really want this damage taken reduction while marching just to be a cavalry trait. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I did keep saying this. I want it to be a reality where I think if you just put this trait on calves, it's going to be a really good one. And then obviously Urag is more specialized in it. So he's going to have more, but Allowing you to have 10% damage taken reduction while you're marching is super powerful. It's just allowing you to just take elite less damage and hopefully be more tankier. But then obviously the damage dealt bonus when you're in combat exactly when you need it. So as soon as you enter battle, all of your skill damage is going to start hitting even harder. So is your normal attacks and anything else, right? So really, really good skill to be fair for his second skill. Then we go to the third skill here, and the third skill is just some stats. We're getting 10% mark speed and 30% attack. Not too bad. Um, I'm not going to lie. I would have preferred um, some actual defense here or HP over the attack, but I understand he is a cavalry PvP skill-based um, like hero, so they're going to try and fulfill the attack need for him. Then when we go into the next one, this one's a really good one again bypassing 10% enemy HP with the 10% rage accumulation speed bonus. So this is a really good one because again, obviously cabs are going to get that 1000 rage from unyielding rush if they hit the ranged units, but sometimes they have to get through, um, you know, infantry. And this is actually really nice that you can bypass that and get some rage accumulation speed. And even when you hit the ranged units and you hit the unyielding rush, the extra rage accumulation speed again helps you get to that next skill faster, which hopefully lets you just keep killing them, right? So I do like this as a kit as a whole. So if you think about it as, you know, the Awakening is 100 damage extra on both of the skills. We have an AOE damage factor here. We have a nice damage taken reduction damage dealt bonus. We get some decent stats. I would prefer something else over the attack personally. And then we have the HP bypass and the rage accumulation speed bonus. This is again really good. There is obviously some people might ask for more rage accumulation speed, but 10% enemy HP bypass is kind of cracked, guys. So I'm kind of scared to see what potentially his artifact might be doing or this new cavalry artifact that might be doing. And as a whole, I'm not going to lie, I really like the guy. I really like the guy. I think it's a really good cavalry hero for once where it's doing an absurd amount of damage and it allows the cavalry units to kind of do what they want to do, which is obviously march into combat take less damage and then when the in combat deal more damage it makes sense that's kind of how i would believe cavalry should operate right so it's a really good 
turn of events here with Urag. I'm not going to lie, really good hero. I'm probably going to try and see if I can unlock him, just so I've got him with some other heroes. I'm going to talk about what matchups we could be looking at with them. But let's go into Tobin now. Tobin is honestly a really good hero here. Um, I really do like the whole gimmick of Tobin. But the problem is, is when we start breaking down his skills, it's not going to be, as you can see, that friendly to players. And that is because you can see the second skill straight away is the rally skill, right? And the third and fourth skill, as you can imagine, as it's just kind of cycling through here, are going to be the passive base skills but if we bring it all the way back to the first one and talk about the first skill we gain a skill damage factor of 1600 and we're reducing our range damage taken right by 30 percent that is amazing that is honestly amazing because the amount of times i see cavalry running in and you have archers mages just absolutely lasering them down it's so good. And the fact that, like, if you're able to close the distance, as you can imagine, with Urag supposed to do, right? Reduce that damage with Tobin. When they hit together, I mean, you get that 30% range reduction. I believe it's going to be really, really powerful, right? But the thing is, I wonder how good this hero is going to be. Because when we start going in, like I said, the second skill is going to be hit and miss everyone's going to really like this if you are a rally lead this is an amazing rally skill because whenever you are launching a rally 50 percent chance to reduce all damage taken by 20 percent for five seconds and this can be triggered every eight seconds that is insane like that is honestly just mind-blowing how much tankiness this has as a rally lead so Definitely going to have a new rally meta shakeup, I will say that. But then we're getting 20% HP bonus, 10% physical attack bonus. So this is what I'm talking about. This is what I like. I like to see these stats. This is kind of what I was hoping to see on carbs. And if Urag had something like defense instead of the attack, maybe like 20% defense instead of 30% attack, I would have been so much more happy with that. It would have made him so tanky with Tobin. It would have been a perfect match made in heaven. Maybe the, the devs saw that and thought it was a bit too much. But it is what it is. But we get some nice stats in 20% HP and the attack. Then we gain as well. We deal 20% more rage skill damage if enemies are in front of our legion. And then we also get 10% more counter attack damage to legions behind Tobin, right? So this is really cool because it's got a weird effect where if you're attacking whoever's in front of you, obviously like the, the pass or so on, you're going to be doing more damage. And if someone for some reason has a rally coming behind you or if there's a rally hitting you from anywhere or they're trying to swarm you, you're going to be doing more counter-attack damage to the back of them, right? So it's going to be interesting. I don't know how powerful person this skill is going to be. I'm not going to lie. This is where I think Tobin's probably the hardest one to actually judge because of this skill. I don't know how good this is going to be in Call of Dragons. I don't want to assume it's going to be OP because I don't know. It's actually like a really unique style of gameplay that we've not seen before, right? But the cool thing with Tobin is compared to Urag, when you awaken this hero, you get a fifth skill. And this is a new passive skill added. And this makes you even stronger on the field. So whenever you are dealing damage with a rage skill, they deal 20% more damage to ranged legions. But when you're targeting um, melee legions, they take 15% less damage for five seconds, right? So it's so crazy how you're getting this additional damage effect, to be honest, for maxing out this hero. And especially if you are a rally lead, you're going to be happy to see that this guy, to me, is going to be a rally meta top top two, if not maybe meta defining when it comes into the game, right? Um, Just because of his passive skill when you get it maxed out, right? But is he worth maxing out? That's the question. Because the thing is with him, and if you look through his skills again, right? The problem is, some people might like to try Tobin. Like I do, I do some kind of experimentations. 
due to the way skills are worded, right? So this skill is a legion based skill. And what that means is, as you can imagine, technically, if you threw this on infantry, it would work. And the crazy thing is, in infantry route, these three skills are really, really powerful. However, you lose all of the stats, right? So that's not like a go-to strat. Maybe I'll try it out if I get it. See, people might try it out, see how good it is, because people like to do some crazy stuff. But when you're looking at Tobin... I don't know if I want to say you invest into him. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're a cavalry main, you're going to go for him. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're a cavalry main, you're going to go for him. And if you're a whale with the job to be that rally leader, to have all the rallies, the best rallies in the game, you're going to have to unlock him, right? But for me and someone else that's looking at this hero personally, I don't want to say go and crazy for him i would personally unlock urag because the thing is if urag is you know what you're getting with him right and the cool thing with urag is first skill second skill third skill and fourth skill are all good for you right compared to the tobin here that is obviously not having a great skill on his um skill too right and that makes it really hard for free to play players and low spenders to kind of get this guy because they're going to try and make him a 5155 hero and that's going to probably take some gems in order to do so and i don't think that's worth it if you're going to go to expertise him again i don't think that's going to be worth it either for a free to play or low spender because i can imagine with the mage heroes coming out that is going to be the final rotation basically once those guys come out right with the infantry you're gonna have generational four and is it really worth dumping 300 plus heads on this skill to get the, the you know the passive unlock on the awakening when you could have used those heads on a generational four hero that most likely guys is gonna out be the generational one or even two um cavalry heroes you know what i mean so that's just kind of where the boat is on Tobin. I actually really like Tobin. I actually think Tobin is desired mainly for the spenders, I'll be honest with you. But when it comes to Urag, Urag is really interested. I really do like the design of this hero. And I think someone like, and when we'll go into now the game, some like, not Emrys, but even Forendale would actually be really, really good with Urag, right? Because the thing is with Forendale, is this new passive skill is going to be really powerful. Do we want him to be served as the deputy to Urag? Because obviously now we have the cavalry skill tree. We can do some really big nuke damage. And then we can also increase the skill damage bonus and the range cost reduction to fifth there, right? So we're gaining as much as we can. Or do we put him in that front slot, right? How Thorndale with the Urag and you get the march speed, the damage dealt bonus on everything by 10% anyway. So it's really good that I think Foreign Bill could be a really op a good option for Urag players if they're going to look for stuff, especially now you're getting defense penetration too, as well as HP bypass, right? And then you're getting all this attack bonus when you're entering the combat. And then on top of this, the defense break and slow march speed guys it's a really insane combo i believe that's going to be on the field is going to be the foreign deal with that urag however maybe some people don't have a good foreign deal or you're looking for other alternatives one i did consider guys was actually alistair because the thing is with alistair since the buff this is actually hero with urag could be really really powerful because if your job is only to try and target as many archers as possible. Urag with Alistair could be devastating because you are getting that massive AoE damage, right? Uh, and skill damage factor from your Urag and now the Alistair. And then you're reducing the counter-attack damage dealt from the archers, right? Even if we're taking away Foreign Dose Cowardice, right? But then we're also gaining the fact that we're having... 30% hero skill damage bonus and rage accumulation speed bonus by 30%. And we also deal 10% more damage and take 10% less damage. 
So, on, so it's, it's all about stacking the same kind of passives as you can see. So I do think this could be a potentially a really good combo if you're trying to make it so you have multiple cavalry marchers all on the field at once, right? Emrys could be something, again, really good with Urag for obvious reasons. Insane single target nuke with insane single target regeneration, right? With the 40% rage accumulation speed through passion. You're gaining, again, 30% physical attack. So in total, your cabs are going to have 60% attack bonus with that Urag. With the actual 10% on the March B2. And the cool thing is with this, you're going to get that 10% damage dealt bonus as well with Emrys. And if you're surrounding, so if you are choosing to run Emrys, Urag, and like say Bakshi and someone else, and you keep going on, right? If you're trying to run these combos, this is now going to get 15% hero skill damage bonus on top. And as well, if you are awakened, you're going to be doing some crazy rage generation. So you do some insane damage with that Urag. So that's one combo I really do see happening, right? Another thing is potentially, I'm not going to be the guy, I'm not honestly the, the best when it comes to rally metas. Um, obviously, some people might think Theodore could be potentially really powerful with Tobin because you're reducing the HP reduction of the targets. But the thing is, a lot of these stuff is to do with garrisoning, right? We don't care about garrisoning with our um, actual Tobin, right? So Tobin, you could run, um, I wouldn't say Bakshi, because Bakshi could be potentially really powerful, apart from if maybe with the mastery skills, you replace this skill with something else, it could be very, very devastating, right? But again, I actually just think Forendil. I think Forendil with Tobin could be devastating. The fact that you're doing a really good damage nuke with the range reduction, and on top of that, like you could apply Cowardice later. Like it's really good. I think the whole combination of both heroes could be very detrimental to Archer players. And that's what's really good to see Cavalry potentially have a lineup now of marches that those cav mains can run and they could run terror on the back line if they find ways of sneaking around and getting there and if they get there it's going to be devastating to see it right so hope you guys have enjoyed my first impressions of the heroes right obviously this isn't telling you guys these are the best heroes in the game it's not telling you this is the the go-to meta or anything it's more about just me talking about Obviously, Urag here and going through these skills one last time so you can just refresh your memory. And obviously going through Tobin. And that's just me telling you, do you know what? Cavs, I have a little bit of faith. You know what I mean? I have a little bit of faith in you. Because these Cavs, plus obviously I think Forendel and Theodore are making you guys really, really terrifying. But you can have some nasty, nasty combos on the open field with multiple cavalry marches, right? So if you enjoyed this video, smash like, comment, and subscribe. Till the next one, stay safe, stay sneaky, peace out.